Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to load the useless RS-97 firmware. It's a newer and more updated custom firmware for the RS-97. It's an alternative to the 97 Next firmware that I showed you previously. In this video, I'm going to keep things simple. So I'm going to show you how to install it onto the external microSD card since it won't require opening up the unit. So the first thing we're going to need is this external patcher that you need to install onto your RS-97. What it essentially does is it patches the internal operating system. So it will look for uh, the, the firmware that's on the external micro SD card, which we will flash or uh, copy to in the next part of the video. So you want to download this tool, unzip it, and then copy it to a micro SD card and then stick it into the RS-97 and then run the application. So using the included file browser, you want to browse to your SD card and then look for the program patch.dge and then open it. And the screen should go blank for a couple of minutes, but once it's done, it should return back to the file browser like, like it's shown here. And then this is where you could turn off the unit and then proceed to the next step. Next, we're gonna download the useless RS-97 custom firmware. And it's different depending on the revision of your unit. So looking at the back of your, your device, uh, once you take out the battery, you should see what revision it is by the date and the version number on the back behind the battery. So make note of that and then download the right custom firmware for your unit. I'll have links to them in the description, so check that out. So after you download the appropriate uh, firmware for your revision, what you wanna do is unzip it. And this one is zipped up with 7-zip, so make sure you download that from the website before you can do it. So this process varies depending on how fast your computer is, but it should take a few minutes to unpackage the uh, firmware. After the firmware is unzipped, you can flash it using Win32 Disk Imager or Etcher to your micro SD card. Uh, you want at least four gigs or more. So next, if you use the micro SD card that's larger than four gigabytes, you wanna resize it to get the most of it. So uh, the image itself is four gigabytes, but since you're writing it to say a eight gigabyte uh, micro SD card, the other four gigs won't be used. And you need to use a partition tool to resize it to make the most of it. In my case, I'm expanding it from four gigabytes to 32 gigabytes here. And this process should take a few minutes and then after it's done, you should have access to the full size of the micro SD for ROMs and other applications. So after you've written the uh, custom firmware to a micro SD card and you've resized it, you can now start copying the games over. There's a couple of ways you can do it, but the way I do it is I just plug it into my computer and then I just copy it over uh, using a micro SD card reader. Now you can stick the micro SD card that has the new custom firmware as well as ROMs into the RS-97 and power it on. It should boot into the custom firmware where you can navigate between the sections using the LNR button. And here are all the new emulators that are installed. There's probably way more emulators than you'll ever need. Uh, I mostly play with a handful of them like the Nintendo emulator and the uh, Game Boy one, but um, there's a whole bunch of them. And these are the applications, the settings. And like I said, you could scroll through them by using the LNR button. And those are the other apps like the file browser, etc. Anyways, that's how you load the useless RS-97 custom firmware onto your unit. Uh, I'll have everything that I mentioned in the description. So links to the custom firmware, to the patcher, etc. They'll all be in the description. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.